Welcome to the Pet and Gilmore House. We are portraying Victorian funeral and mourning traditions. In each room you will see some of the uh, traditions, um, the facts, the superstitions of what happened during the Civil War during a funeral. Well, you will notice that here in the library, the window coverings are in place and that's to keep uh, the world from intruding in this uh, rather somber time for the family and friends. We've also covered all the mirrors in the house because the belief is that after the death and before the funeral, the first person to see themselves in a mirror, it will be the next person to die. And we carry the body out when we take it out of the house. We will take it out feet first because that way uh, the belief is that he will not, uh, the, the spirit will not influence any of us to join the deceased person on his uh, trip to the next world. This is a room where we're housing the infant casket. The mortality rate was very high. Death was very constant in the 1860s. Three out of 20 children did not live until they were one year old. It was very expensive to have your photograph taken. So only the rich really had them. However, if an infant or a young child died, the parents would somehow get the money together and have the photographer come to take a picture of the de deceased child. This was very, very special, the only remembrance that they really had of the child. Back in the Victorian days, they didn't fear death, they feared not being remembered. So therefore, they wanted them, their memory and uh, the, their life to have some meaning, so we kept the mourning traditions going until after the uh, Civil War and kept on until uh, World War I. These are examples of Victorian uh, hair jewelry. Uh, mourning jewelry has been around since the 1400s, uh, but the hair jewelry became popular especially in the 1850s and 60s. At the same time, in the United States, the Civil War was taking place. Uh, soldiers in the 1860s would actually leave locks of their hair with their family in the event that they did not return. Uh, you could receive instructions on how to do this yourself or you could have it professionally done. The wreaths were especially popular. Victorian ladies liked to decorate their homes and uh, they, would, they would make the wreaths. It was not unusual to have uh, several gen different generations represented within the wreaths. I think it's very sentimental. Um, I personally I personally like it very much, and um, I would like to read a quote from a lady's book of the time period. It said that hair is at once the most delicate and lasting of our materials and survives us like love. During the Victorian period, the custom was for the widow to wear full mourning attire for a period of at least two and a half years after the deceased had passed away, and that would include a fingertip length veil over the lady's face when she went out in public, no jewelry, and all black garments. After a minimum period of two and a half years, she might go into half mourning, which would still include a black dress, but her veil may be shortened to shoulder length, and she could begin wearing some jewelry, although nothing shiny or with colored stones. So the only time a lady would leave the house would be to go to church, and then generally it would be on the arm of her son her uncle, her brother, or another male relative. She generally would not speak to other men, and no one would speak to her while she had her veil down unless she spoke to them first. It was considered a sign of respect. Many of the, the mourning traditions that we're talking about here in the house were made popular by Queen Victoria of England, even though these traditions did exist before her time. She went into mourning when her husband, the Prince Albert, passed away in 1861, um, which was the proper thing for a widow to do. But the difference was that Queen Victoria remained in mourning for 40 years until she herself passed away. She only wore black um, in public and probably also in private. She stopped wearing her crowns because they had the sparkly jewels, so that wasn't appropriate. She only wore veils. We put this on uh, the Historical Society. We have friends of the GAR that's involved. We have uh, re Civil War reenactors. Uh, it's a, a combined um, event and uh, we all came together and I think that uh, we'll do this every year around Halloween. To find out about other special events hosted by the Peoria Historical Society, call 309-674-1921.